Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Ellen. So today we're working on shadows. Shadows in watercolor. Using a couple of colors. I love to use ultramarine deep blue and burnt sienna to create these wonderful shadow colors. And there's such a variety with the two colors. So it's a winter scene from a photograph that I took uh, on my walk yesterday with the dog. If you're a Patreon member, you get the photograph and the traceable. If you're not a Patreon member, uh, click the link in the description below to join Patreon. You can join and cancel any time. Uh, the patrons also get a little extended version of this um, but listen you can take photographs of the snow where you are or just watch me how i do it and paint it and i talk about how you can even just draw this yourself so if you have any questions leave them in the comment section it's just the exercise and shadows and how it works when you see the sun and the color variations of it as you can see there's some lighter grays and some really intense shadows so if you're struggling with shadows this is a tutorial for you so let's get started all right, so let me go over a few supplies. Um, I'm using Fabriano's 100% um, cotton cold pressed paper. This is from a block, um, and I just took it off the block because it is bright white. Um, I'll put the link, of course, and it's in my um, Amazon shop on my description box. So yes, it's a very like bright white. Um, the arch paper is more cream, and so I want, if I'm gonna do a snow type picture, I really want the white intensity because of watercolor, you leave the white, what's just light, and in acrylic and oil, you paint that over. So you have to do the opposite here, which kind of train your brain to like not paint those areas, right? So you can do that by using a masking fluid or just not painting it, period. Um, and I just taped it down with some Scotch magic tape uh, on just a thick piece of cardboard. I'll be playing with my Princeton 12 Neptune series brush and my Princeton 8 long round velvet touch series brush for like the nice twigs, whatever, et cetera, et cetera. Um, this is a new palette that I bought. There's a link in my Amazon shop to this. If you love the um, Sylvan Clay Works one I have that I use, I show a lot in the videos. Very expensive and they're out of stock. So um, this is really a cheap, this is like porcelain. This is not ceramic. And I like it because you can put the colors all here and then um, just use them right in the center here. And then, you know, mop it up if you have to. Uh, the colors I'll be playing with are Ultramarine Blue and Burnt Sienna. Uh, I don't know if I'll be playing with Cabin Yellow Deep. Maybe Maybe. Not much green going on here in the wintertime. <laughs> uh, I've got some cobalt blue, Prussian blue, burnt umber, paint's gray, and I definitely won't be using the the reds that I have here. They're for, they were from other tutorials, and there was raw sienna here from another tutorial as well. So I'll we'll play around with a few colors. So for the sky, um, if you're, like I said, if you're a Patreon member, you get the trace in the photograph that I took on my walk yesterday and the freezing cold with the snow. But just imagine yourself you could just draw a kind of curved line here and then one out here for the edge of where the lake is and then some greenery here. Of course, they're like, it's just like greens or trees, whatever, and then the sky. Now, in the photograph, I kind of cropped it, but the sun is kind of here. So when you're doing perspective with shadows, with sun, I always tell people, go outside. And when you're taking photographs, don't take photographs on a gray day. It's just like, it's not a great composition. It's kind of boring. Um, you'd have to imagine where the shadows are. So really, when you see that sun, go out and take the photographs. And that's what I did yesterday. Because then it creates a really beautiful composition and really contrast shadows, gives it more, you know, oomph to your picture. And so the sun is here. So you imagine perspective is going like this, right? This way. And so the shadows will go this way from the trees and straight out as it's going this way, right? So here's the photograph that I give my, my uh, patrons. The sun is up here, so it's going straight here, and it would go here as it's following the sun, and vice versa. And then behind the sun, the other side would go the other way. And you can see this in various photographs. Um, you know, just go go on like, Unsplash or Pixabay, and you'll find like, I don't know, type in like snowy shadows, and you'll see like trees with snowy shadows. Let's see what happens, see if you can find something like that. So. To begin with, I'm just going to grab some lovely cobalt for the sky. I'm just going to loosen it up. This is cobalt blue. Consistency is pretty loose. It's almost like tea. And I'll just put the, I don't necessarily think I'm going to put the clouds in, but I'm just going to wash in the sky. And because it's all dark trees up here, I can just go across and wash in all over it. It'll be pretty dark. There's not going to be white on, snow on there. And this is just the, the lovely background sky and I'll keep it blue I'm not gonna go bother with the clouds if you want to put clouds in knock yourself out and pretty more, more tense I'll add some more pigment 
which is my color up here. So give it a little bit of variety. It was pretty intense blue sky yesterday. So there we go. And then the water is kind of a little bit of the cobalt. It's reflecting that sky, right? We've got some white kind of happening in here. Um, then you just take your brush. You still have the same consistency of paint. And we can kind of like play a little game here where we're kind of dancing. This like a little bit of ice kind of happening here. And I'm going to see the line is right here. And I'll just kind of dance in here again using this color. And you can mask the trees in. I'm just going to put it in here. Now there is some white on this tree. Um, excuse me. I'm going to try not to get the white on this one. So I'll remove this one as I'm looking at it. Oops. That's OK. Really quick. So for that tree, I'll work around it. And then for this section where you see it kind of reflecting, just kind of like leaving white space in between the trees, a little bit of blue. Or you can just go blue across if it's really difficult for you to just kind of just imagine little lines here. I've got to be careful not to paint this tree because of the snow that's going to be on it. And just a little bit in here. So we're leaving some of that white for this glistening part of the sun. And some little light back here. Almost like ice back there. So try not to get in this tree. I can go behind it. That's where my uh, tape is, so yeah. Just go like that. My paper towel is getting in my way. So I'm leaving this fairly light. I can go over this color a little bit more. Some cobalt blue, maybe some burnt sienna just to dull it down a little bit. I like the brightness of it though. It was a very bright day. See, I'm gonna go back another layer here with the cobalt blue. It's fairly, so if it's too bright, you feel like it's too bright, you can just grab a tip to be a brush that burnt sienna, see how it dulls it down? I'm going to show like a gray. So you can add some of that. It's going to change it up a little bit. This paper towel is really annoying. <laughs> there we go. Just a teeny, teeny bit. Not too much. I'm going to leave that glistening, glistening white color right here where the sun's hitting it. Now you can try and like remove the paint off your brush and just do like a very nice dab of dry brush because this paper has the tooth. And I'm going to leave that little glistening area. And grab a little bit more cobalt blue. Go back here a little bit. It's still very wet. You might want to wait till it dries and go back in because otherwise it can create some like cauliflower blooms. All right, I'm going to let that dry. So for this background area, you have to wait till this kind of dries. It's fairly dry. Um, I'm going to mix in some ultramarine blue, burnt sienna, like a nice little gray tone, a little brown. I can grab some of my burnt umber here. We'll have a couple of the tones here and maybe we're mixing them up. And we'll really make it, you know, it looks fairly dark in the photograph, so I don't want it super dark. We'll just play around with adding some color and then see how dark it looks, and then we can add more color. So I'm going to grab some browns, too. just going to put those in here. Again, I'm going to avoid my tree here on this side, the bigger tree. It's, you know, fairly light, and I want to hit that. Same thing over here. The smaller ones don't really matter. So I'm just going to wash in this color here and over in here. Like I said, going around the bigger trees. Still with my number 12 brush. It's just basically, I would call it a, you know, it doesn't have to be perfect picture, like a study of the day of what I saw. So it's feeling wet. Oh, it's got into my, if that happens to you, don't fret. I'll clean up my brush fairly quickly. 
and just kind of play with lifting it up a little bit. It's going to be fine. And actually around the end there's like almost like white ice. So it's still very light. I might go back in and add some more of this burnt umber. Now if you notice when you mix ultramarine blue and raw sienna you get this granulating effect because they kind of opposite of colors they just don't like they fight with each other it's like oil and water and you get this cool granulation which i really love and as you go on top of the color and add more color to it it gets even more granulated so it's kind of fun to play with and i'm just adding some more color here a little thicker pigment as you can see kind of on the bottom more than on the top just kind of tap it in with this brush, get a little bit deeper and darker. It looks fairly light, you know. Going in here, you could add a little bit more blue if you want. And then because the tops would be like trees, you can kind of play with kind of wiggling the top. So I'm gonna grab some of that front umber. Tap it, I got a little too much water here. So I'll take my brush and just kind of wiggle almost like little points going up some trees just pretend they're trees see how I'm just taking the tip and kind of like almost like they're fuzzies on the end of this little line and you don't want them all perfect now it has bled into the other one but I will fix it so these are little fixing mistakes that I can show you how to fix if it happens to you so you see, I'm going to show you up close. We've got this cauliflower situation happening. That's how you fix it. I take my eight or another brush. It's a little stiffer. And I'm just going to lift. The color is bleeding into the color. It's created a cauliflower bloom. So it's a little white in that area, but you know what? Actually, I'm looking at the photograph there was almost like ice there, so it actually works in my favor that I'm lifting. And then slowly lifting a little bit, just softening this edge, the hard edge down here. So I got lucky. I'm going to remove some paint over here because it is kind of icy. You need a stiff brush to do this. Just lift, tap, lift, tap. And it worked in my favor. <laughs> sometimes it does and I can go back and like I said with the thicker pigments now that paint is removed it shouldn't really bleed into it anymore if it does you can go back and try that again I'm going to just tap in a little bit of brown a little bit of gray see how I'm doing that here you want some different tonalities a little deeper on the bottom though but you can see like the beautiful granulation of the colors kind of separating the blue and the raw sienna. I'm gonna add a little more blue. And there's some nice browns. Okay, I'm gonna get too dark. See, I started to do it again. <laughs> Don't! But that's all you do. You just kind of do a little quick lifting. It's okay. Don't freak out. Remember, you're supposed to have fun. Don't stress. People stress out too much. It's just pain. It's just pain. You mess it up. I'm, oh, by the way, I didn't mention the size. It barely, it's like a seven by nine. It's a small one. You can do it again. You know, it's an exercise and learning. That's what it's all about. Doing the shadows. All right, we'll leave it now and we'll start working on our trees. I'm gonna let this dry and then come back. So for this part, I just sped it up because it makes no sense to show you step by step. I mixed ultramarine blue with some burnt sienna and I've just washed in the trees. Um, you can use variant tones of both and just putting in the super trees and all the little branches. It's been not nice to see me paint every little nook and cranny of this, but, and then of course you wanna act, actually darken the area next to that tree on the right because that's got a little light shadow on it. So of course, add some negative painting by adding some darker tones just by filling that area back in. As you can see here, you know, so that other tree kind of stands out that's lighter over here. Yes, you don't want it to be too dark. That is like the sun shining on that tree. 
But the rest of them, you can, and it can get a little darker on the right side, like you guys see me painting here, right? The rest of them, just simple, straightforward, mixing the colors, varying the tones between the blue and the browns, and just putting in all the trees, all the little twigs, et cetera, et cetera. Like I said, we get not monotonous to see me paint this, but the Patreon members get the full so, tutorial. We're gonna go back to the ultramarine blue, burnt sienna, blue. So there's that one tree. You see snow coming up of it. I would do this one first, and I'm just gonna hold the brush like, kind of on its side. Maybe water it down a little bit. It's a little too dark. And I can see here. I'm gonna go like this and have the blue come down the shadow because the snow is on it but it's a blue shadow of the snow going like this because I want that dry brush kind of situation now I can go do it on this tree you see the snow kind of comes up in there and then you can see from here like the perspective right from the photograph like I showed you it's different it's going to be coming out this way Same thing with this one. The these ones are more strif, strif, really intense, you know, lines. And then some of the like, little softened because it's the shadow, even more shadow. So what I mean by that, I would get the paint, water it down even more. And it's almost like a wet on wet kind of softening line. So water this down a little bit and you see all these little shadows, not hard lines. I'm gonna grab some water and kind of soften them. See, there's like little shadows kind of happening in a lighter color all over on this side. So I've watered it down and then you'll see some hard line ones. There's a really bunch of really soft kind of shadows happening. So two tones, you water the color that you had mixed here and you kind of soften it. And I'll add that line here, kind of coming down, if that makes any sense. If you really want to get technical with all the shadows, some are much more hard line and some are softer. And it's really just kind of like a wiggling method. You don't have to follow the super pattern. You just get the gist of it. And of course, the darker color makes the hard line. So we get to the tree here. See that, the hard line. This tree right here has another, it's like a double line. There was a much, darker line here. I hope this is making sense. And you get this dark harsh line here. Another double one here. So those are like the real hard, hard, harsh lines that you want thicker color pigment for. That go all the way out. You get a few of those happening. Even the little twiggies can have some. This one's a little soft, right? And then perspective, because the sun's coming this way, these trees over here, right? All this good stuff. You see how this is going? <laughs> There's a tree right here. I haven't painted it yet, but in little twigs. So you can put the little twigs going too. I hope this makes sense. So there's softer shadows and then there's a hard shadow. And I'm gonna go back on my hard shadow if it got just a little washed out. But that's how it goes. And some crisscross. All right, so now that we have that, it should be dry now. We can go back and use our tree color. And we go back in, we have our little, I'm gonna add some more brown to mine. Our tree, see? that had the snow with the shadow right here. And we'll go and fill it in. Now this color might be a little too light. I'll go back in. When you mix ultramarine blue deep with some of the other colors I mentioned, um, it has a great granulation effect. So again, for this area, I added some more tree, more branches. I'm adding some more hardline shadows. And I'm going, I'm, I sped this up because it's monotonous again. And I add some browns, little brown twigs. You just kind of like go around and you're adding more, adding more shadows. You don't need to see me paint every little nook and cranny. And then, like I said, you can go back in. Um, this is obviously darker back here. 
you know, you always want to start up kind of light and then build. So I might go back in and add some more depth back here with this background that I have. Just wiggling the paint. Can be more brown and more blues. It's up to you. So for this last bit, I've mixed up some ultramarine blue, burnt sienna, more 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 burnt sienna. See, so nice and thick. And I'm gonna put that where the little dried leaves are around the branches. Just kind of like tap it around, tippy tap. <laughs> you know, I love to do my tippy taps uh, all around the branches, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. You know, and then down below, there's some like little branches with leaves. And on the right hand side, just look around. Uh, you can put them wherever you want. So like I said, the Patreon members get the extended version, the longer version, um, and the traceable and the uh, photograph. And you can just join and cancel any time, and you can find that in the description box. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial of a winter watercolor landscape, really learning about shadows and the composition. So have fun, take care, and I'll speak to you soon.